Yeah. But can I ask you about that? Because I asked before, would you mind talking about it? Because you were much in the news last week yeah. about this issue because you were on George Stephanopoulos' show. Mm -hmm. And he was questioning about the idea that you're supporting Trump, who was found guilty of sexual assault by a jury in New York for the E. Jean Carroll case. Um, and you were a rape victim yourself. And he's, I guess his implication was that being so, that you should not support someone who is uh, convicted of this crime. Well, number one, uh, to set the stage a little bit, I went on to talk about 2024, when the general election of Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. I had my 14-year-old kid with me, my daughter with me that day. It was, it, was, it was work. I was there for work. She had no choice. She had to come with me. It was a really uncomfortable conversation afterwards with her on the way to the airport over this. And she knows my story. But number one, Donald Trump wasn't convicted of sexual assault. Um, the, the 83 million was a defamation suit. It was about defamation. There was a sexual abuse claim, and she got a little bit for that. But the vast majority of it was for defamation, not rape, not sexual assault. So um, I think there are two is types. Is that right, of, it, it, That is right. Let, let me just say this. That is well, right. Let, let, me, let me say this about what happened there and from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And I, look, I have a lot of respect for Nancy Mace's courage in talking about rape and sexual assault, and I admire your being public about that. I, I, Thank you. It's not easy. I, I also think, you know, I, I know Nancy's good at ask, answering tough questions, and I, I also think, as George Stephanopoulos, as a journalist at a time where I believe in the First Amendment, he should be asking everyone, and not just her, any Republican. It's a fair question if you're saying if there is a person who's running for president uh, and but maybe had, give had, a heads up just, to the rape victim yeah. that you're going to talk to her about her own rape when she comes on your show, and that's the first thing you're going to ask. Like that to me, like they didn't do that. There was no, hey, we're going to film this clip, and this clip triggers me. Right. Uh, five years ago, I told my story on the South Carolina State House floor. I, we were doing a fetal heartbeat bill. There were no exceptions for rape or incest, and there were no women speaking. Rape victims and girls who were victims of incest had no voice. I had never told my story publicly. It took me 25 years. I go to the wall and I tell the story for the first time. We were the first state in the nation to have a fetal heartbeat bill with exceptions for rape and incest because I put them in there after very, uh, after very, after a very, very simple time telling that story. And so it takes a lot of courage, but then to feel like he was weaponizing my own rape for a political hit job, and it was wrong. My daughter was there. It was awful. I felt bullied. Um, the least they could have done is said, hey, we're going to talk about this, but we're going to lead with it. And it was a 10-minute interview about my own rape. It was completely, I think, wholly inappropriate. I will answer the tough questions. I have talked about it, but that video, that speech I give, gave triggers me. I know I gave it publicly, but it's I mean, there was, it was a reason. For, it Those didn't come out of left field. There was a reason why he asked the question. It was, a it was related job. to something with Donald Trump. And mm -hmm. Donald Trump, I mean, you're, you're, you went to the Citadel, right? Yeah, and I will tell you, George Stephanopoulos went the last 30 seconds at the Citadel. That place made me tough. I will answer I'll, all the I'll questions. Bet, oh, but I'll, I'll, I think I'll in, in a time where, where I know we share a view of the First Amendment, I mean, journalists mm -hmm. are supposed to ask basic questions, and not just of, of Nancy, but of any Republican, I think, here's a fair question. Should you support someone as a president who has a civil conviction of sexual assault and who didn't concede the January 6th election? Every Republican should be asked that. And I, and, I, and, and, I, and, and I think, and I think whether it's you know I go on Fox, Nancy goes on uh, on MSNBC, or Bill Maher. Bill Maher. I, I, yeah. we, we have got no, to get in this true. country not only that we can talk to each other, but that we we aren't censoring people asking tough questions. You know, being a member of Congress is like one of the most privileged things in human it history. Is. You're point zero 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 one percent privilege. So you go and you get asked a tough question. That's the job of journalists. It was more than that, and you know that, it was. It that, was a political that, that's hit what, job. It that, was bullying. That's what it was rape anyway. shaming is what it was. Asked okay. by George Stephanopoulos, a guy that covered for the Clintons for years, and called women bimbos. Like, no thank you. No thank you. But I respect okay, but you're sharing your story, and yeah. that I want to make clear. That okay. I do think that took a lot of time. I appreciate time you because you know what? You're the first, I think, Democrat member of Com Congress that has said that to me. Over the course of this week, I had a lot of Republican colleagues come up to me, and you're, I think you're the first Democrat to do that. So I applaud that. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you. Yay. Yay. We're solving, we're solving America right here. Okay.